How to make soy pudding? That's today's challenge. Soy pudding is known as tau hua, tau fu fa, or tau hu hua in Hokkien, tau fu fa in Cantonese. Today, we're going to use only two ingredients in making the tau hua or silken tofu. And we're going to use a coagulant and we're going to use homemade soybean milk. Hi, I'm Loretta Lee of Nonya Recipe. Nonya Recipe is a fine place for fabulous food and I share with you my food journey. Normally, to make tau fu fa or silken tofu, we need a coagulant and it's usually gypsum, otherwise known as calcium sulfate. Another coagulant is nigari, which is used by the Japanese to make Japanese tofu. I'll be using three methods to make the tou hua. There are also a few tips that I learned from the experiments and I will share with you so that it is easy for you. Remember we made soy milk in an earlier video? So we start from scratch, blending the soy with water, squeeze it and then we cook it. For the soy pudding, I use my homemade soy, which is quite thick. The proportion of the beans to soy milk is 200 grams soybeans to a maximum of 1.75 liters of water. We start at the stage of boiling the soy milk. Once it is cooked, we can use it to make the soy pudding. So, let's get started. The first method is the pouring method. And this is the simplest method that we learned from like ages ago, a long, long time ago. The coagulant that I'm using is GDL or Glucono Delta Lactone. First, we prepare 1.25 gram of GDL. This is about one quarter teaspoon but do not use a teaspoon to measure as it can be inaccurate. To weigh such a tiny amount, I use a jewellery scale or a small digital scale. I know this is something new and I will put the link to the GDL and the jewellery scale in the description box. In a large bowl, mix the GDL with 1 tablespoon of water and stir to dissolve. To this, we add 500 ml of hot soy milk. Pour the soy milk from the height of about 30 cm or a foot into the bowl. As I'm pouring it from less than 30 cm, I'm giving it a quick stir instead. I'm trying to remove some of the bubbles before it's set but to no avail. Cover and set it aside for about 30 minutes. The soy pudding is ready to serve. You might want to remove the bubbles from the surface before serving and spoon it into smaller bowls to serve. Let's check out the texture. It's firm and still jiggly and it gels up nicely. So this method is okay. The second method is pour and stir. Do the same like the pouring method. Gently pour in the soy milk, no need to be from a height. Then give the mixture three quick stirs. Remove some of the bubbles if you can, but I suggest you do it quick so as not to disturb the coagulation. Cover and rest for 30 minutes. I make another batch and I pour the mixture into individual serving dishes. I let it stand for 30 minutes, covered with cling film. If you find value in this video so far, please like and subscribe as it would help the algorithm. Let's check the texture. The proof is in the pudding, they say. It looks firm and soft at the same time and jiggly. The one in the individual dishes are okay too, but because it is such a small volume, when I spoon it up, it sort of breaks, but the texture is okay. The third method is to steam. We use the same ingredients as previously, but we use cold soy milk. <coughs> Pour this. I'm pouring gently to avoid bubbles. Then I give a gentle stir. 
and I ladle it into serving dishes. I'm doing it very gently so I don't create extra bubbles. We put it in a steaming tray. I'm steaming this over high heat but it should be over medium heat and I'll show you why. Watch till the end to find out. Prick to remove some of the bubbles on the surface if you have. Wrap the steamer lid with a piece of cloth to absorb moisture when it's steaming. Steam for about 8 to 9 minutes. Here you go, it's done. There's some slight condensation on the bigger bowl and the sides is a bit like the broken up but it should be okay. Steaming over medium heat will eliminate this. Let's check it out. The surface is nice and smooth and without a lot of bubbles, which is good presentation-wise. It is firm and soft and is jiggly as well and there's not too much water around, so the proportion is nice. For the ones in the small dishes, it's very firm. It doesn't break but it's still soft in that sense. I'm also handling it better by now instead of just mushing it up with a teaspoon as earlier on. I steam another one with the cling film over the bowl. The result is there's still condensation on the bowl. You can easily pour away the water or dab it with a kitchen towel. So I steam another time covered with cling film but I cut off the cling film after steaming. There's not much condensation after cooling. You can also prick a few holes on the cling film for the steam to escape. So, my conclusion is Number 1. Use GDL. It is easy to use and it gives good results all the time. Number 2. Use the pour and stir method. Forget about the old wife steel that you got to pour standing on a stool. GDL allows you enough time to work with it. But you need to be quick. The third method is steaming. Steaming on medium heat gives the best texture. Steam with a cloth over the lid or use cling film. So those are the three methods and I think the pouring method and the pour and stir are similar except that the, for, for the pour and stir, we just stir it a bit more and by using GDL, we can actually have a bit more time to sort of put it in a smaller container so that we make it in serving sizes and for the steaming method it's good but it's a bit more work oh yes i'll be doing a video on how to serve soy pudding in two ways so keep a lookout so if you enjoy watching this video please don't forget to click like and hit the subscribe button and the notification button so that you'll be informed of all the videos that i upload and until then, I'm Loretta Lee, Nonya Recipe. Nonya Recipe is a fine place for fabulous food and I share with you my food journey. And if you want to follow other recipes and videos, don't forget to click here for more recipes. So bye then, ciao!